Okay, so let's prove it. First in one dimension and then time permitting, I'll entertain those of you who have taken multivariable calculus and know the divergence theorem, which is the generalization of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So here I will use the fundamental theorem of calculus. And then for this it'll be the same thing except you have to replace it with divergence theorem and it'll work the same way. Okay, let's prove that the Laplacian is a self-adjoint transformation. Or if we abuse terminology, we can call it a symmetric transformation. Because the idea is the same. Okay, suppose I have a function u and v, and I'm dotting u with the Laplacian of v. I'm dotting u with the Laplacian of v in one dimension. The question that I should have asked and answered but haven't yet is with respect to what in a product? Well, it's with respect to this in a product. It's with respect to this in a product. Okay, so with respect to this in a product, this equals the inner product of u and the Laplacian of v is you multiply u by the Laplacian of v, which is just the second derivative in one dimension, dx. What can I do with this expression? Boy, this is bringing back some, some calculus, isn't it? Well, you know what? In a calculus book, this is called integration by parts, which I'm not going to do. I'm just going to, I never use, in my personal way of thinking, integration by parts. I always break it down in the two steps that it is. So first, I will just use the product rule in reverse inside. So the product rule in reverse, so let's go with integral from 0 to 1. I'll write this, here's what I'm doing, just so that you're not confused by that ddx notation. What I'm basically saying is that u, excuse me, v prime equals u v prime minus u prime v. Do you see why that is? It's because two ways to, to think about it. Of course you guys all see it, but it's helpful to think about it in two ways. One way to think about it is if you look at this, it'll be u prime v plus u v prime. So you move u prime v to the other side and that's what you have. I guess there's only one way to think about it. I was going to think of it as a different way of uh, I think of it as a slightly different way. So the way I think about it is that I start here, this is my ddx. I move this operator, I factor out the operator of ddx, which picks up an extra term of u prime v. So then I have to subtract it out to correct it. And the reason why I want this, this is what I really want. I really want this because it's a full derivative of something, and I can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to it. I cannot apply the fundamental theorem of calculus here because it's not a full derivative. So I artificially make it a full derivative of something and then make up for it with this minus term. So I much prefer this way of thinking compared to integration by parts, which is these two ideas combined. You don't want to combine these two ideas because sometimes you go off on other tangents, no pun intended, with after the first step. So I will write this as this, because it's a full derivative of something, is subject to the fundamental theorem of calculus. And the integral of this from 0 to 1 is this antiderivative evaluated at 1 minus its value evaluated at 0. But because we're only considering functions that have zeros at the boundary, this term drops out. Because when you do apply the fundamental theorem of calculus and do that evaluation at the endpoints, they're both 0 because u is 0 at both points. So this actually drops out. And we're left with, I'll just write it. So here is what 
Integration by parts, even though I don't like calling it, that does. The effect of integration by parts, the way I think about it in terms of functionally, what it is you're trying to accomplish. It moves the one derivative from one term to the other. It makes the derivative hop from one term to the other, always picking up a minus sign. So the minus sign seems like a nuisance until you see it so often that you recognize, you, you realize it's how profound it is. Actually, it has to do with the, it's equivalent of the transpose in linear algebra, or the adjoint in the more complicated, in the more general spaces. But that's beside the point. So there's always that minus sign, and what we succeeded in doing is moving one derivative from V to U. Yes? So what I'm going to do now is move the other derivative from V to U, using integration by parts again, those two steps. And what we'll end up with is, can, can you kind of imagine? So the derivative hops, there will be another application. I will do, again, the same thing. I'll take d dx out. Now off of this, I'll take d dx and move it out. Right, and so to make up, and I'll use the fundamental theorem of calculus in that term. And to make up for that, so to speak, I will have this second derivative of u multiplying v. By the same token, this term will, the analogous term will drop out. You can call it the boundary term because you evaluate it at the boundaries by the fundamental theorem of calculus. The two minuses will cancel each other and you end up, and you'll end up with the integral. And this, if you will notice, is the Laplacian of u dotted with v. So you see, it doesn't matter whether you put the Laplacian on the second term or on the first. Just like here, it doesn't matter whether you put it on the second term, on the second term in the dot product, or the first element, I should say, rather than term. So the Laplacian is a self-adjoint operator. So to my discussion of why the Laplacian is so important, because it has that invariant meaning, add another. It's a self-adjoint, or if you want to abuse terminology, symmetric, symmetric operator, if you limit yourselves to functions that vanish on the boundaries. And so this automatically proves, we don't have to repeat this argument, it automatically proves that all of the eigenfunctions of the Laplacian are, are real, all of the eigenvalues are real, and that the corresponding eigenfunctions are orthogonal or can be chosen to be orthogonal, which you already saw with the Fourier series, right? Those sines and cosines. It was, oh my goodness, they're orthogonal, how nice, how very helpful. Well, it's not a coincidence. It's because they're the eigenfunctions of the Laplacian, which is a self-adjoint operator. The analogy of this, the analog of the symmetric matrix. Okay, so that proves real and orthogonal. Why are they all negative? Why are they all, well, excuse me, why is it negative definite? Why is it negative definite? Well, in matrix terms, what is negative definite? is when you do x transpose ax, and it's always positive for any x. But when you're dealing with operators, you have to reword it a little bit, because you can't say transpose or times. So for operators, you have to say that an operator is, let's say, positive definite, but we'll prove that the Laplacian is negative definite. If x dotted with tx, is positive for all x not equal to zero. All right, so there you go, totally straightforward. Make sense that that's how you would generalize it to arbitrary inner, inner product and arbitrary spaces. So there's that, you would say arbitrary inner product spaces. That means both arbitrary inner product and arbitrary space. Okay, so let's, let's prove this. You actually see the proof on the board. So I will actually not write anything else, I'll just tell you. So now you have to imagine u multiplying the Laplacian of u. So this will be u times the second derivative of u. You will do the same thing, and you will end up here, which will be the integral, which will be, let me do it like this, minus the integral, 
All right, minus the integral of du dx squared, which is always less than zero. We have to be careful. You might say, yeah, but what about a constant function? Then this is zero, and then the whole thing is zero, not positive. But constant functions are excluded by the boundary condition of being, of e being equal zero, because then the whole function is zero, and then it's excluded by this. So constant functions are excluded from here. So this is not a constant function. So this is not zero. So we're integrating something positive. So it's always less than zero. So to recap, so nothing to it, right? So to recap, the Laplacian is a negative definite self-adjoint operator. The proof is right here. Consequence, all of its eigenvalues are real, all of the eigenfunctions are orthogonal, it can be chosen to be orthogonal, and all of the eigenvalues are negative. Okay, so that's the value of self-adjoint operators, and this is really, in my book, the glory, or one of the glories of linear algebra. How it, it constrains itself to only talk about things in terms that are applicable to all sorts of vector spaces, all sorts of transformations, all sorts of inner products. So, so many of the most important, really some of the most fundamental observations, theories in applied mathematics are merely a special case of a finding in linear algebra.